there, there's always that defining moment. Then you know that you're, you're called. God has to call you individually. Right. How did you know? What was your moment? You know, my, the story I tell about that that's kind of interesting, I had, uh, when I was in college, I had several friends who went um, forward after services, and my dad was the pastor, of course, and surrendered to ministry because they felt called. And I would sit there and watch them go down, and my dad would get them up in front of the church and say, this is so-and-so, and he's feeling called to ministry, and everybody would clap, and I would sit there thinking, do I feel called? So one day I was talking to my dad, and I said, Dad, do you have to be called, or can you just volunteer? And he said, I think you can just volunteer. And I said, well, I would like to volunteer for ministry, but I don't know that I'm really called. I don't, I, I, you know, I wasn't smart enough to be able to discern that. And so that was kind of the beginning for me. Probably my uh, junior year of college. That is so cool. People look at you and they think, oh, ministry looks so fun. It looks exciting, glamorous. <laughs> but, you know, being a church, I'm a church planner too, and I know how hard it is. Yep. There's got, there was got, there had to be some low points those early days. Yeah, like, church planning. Low points for you. It is hard, and people do make it look easy because when they talk about it, of course, by the time you're talking to them, things are going, are going well, um, things are big, you know. Nobody interviews the, the church planners in the first week or the first <laughs> month Seriously. or the first year. I, I think the, the biggest emotional thing were the people that you thought were going to come with you and didn't. Or the people that started with you and said, you know, this is just too hard. And they would say this, they would say, now, when you get going, which meant when you have a building and you have classes for my children and you have everything in place, then we'll join you. And I used to think, by the time we have all that, we won't really need you to join us. <laughs> that means, you know, we've gotten over those hurdles. So, um, and you just have to say, okay, you know, God calls different people to do different things. And um, I didn't get into this because that particular couple said they were coming or that particular That's individual. Right. So you just maintain a good attitude and go on. Now, you have a, son, uh, a scripture that you have hung in your office. Mm -hmm. I'm going to read it because I didn't memorize it. That's all right. This one, Acts 15:19. And so my judgment is that we should not make it difficult for the Gentiles who are turning to God. It's an odd scripture. Why would you hang that Yeah, up? this is from Acts 15. That's really been a theme of our ministry and our church planting is let's not make it unnecessarily difficult for people who turn, are turning to faith. So anything that's churchy, anything that is an unnecessary obstacle to faith, let's just eliminate it. And uh, the, the gospel is offensive. The cross is offensive, but church doesn't have to be offensive. The music doesn't have to be offensive. The children's program doesn't have to be offensive. The style of communication doesn't have to be offensive. So we, we've just taken our cue from that verse to say, let's not make it difficult. Well, Andy, it was great to Thank meet you. you. Great yeah. to talk to you. Yeah. I'm a huge fan. Um, write your leadership books. God bless you. Thank you so much. That's the good work. Thanks for the opportunity.